versus process. Process. Tell somebody process. Process. Tell somebody process. It's a daily necessity for daily triumph. Triumph is necessary. Process is necessary. Amen. We live in a world today that process is avoided and not too many people want to go through process but I've learned by experience for the past 40 years of preaching that the value and the price of a product is determined by the process it went through. Can I say it again? The value and the price of a product is determined by the process it went through. And if you force the process of a product, you trigger the expiry date. It means that you can kill it before it begins. You can cut it short before it's time. So, endure the process. Tell somebody, endure the process. It's like a woman pregnant. It doesn't matter the discomfort she goes through, the changes in her body. She has to endure the process to have the child. She has to obey the instructions of the doctor. Some of them, when they are pregnant, they have to sleep in a particular side or in a particular way, a position, to be able to carry the pregnancy. And they eat all kinds of things, do all kinds of things. It's very uncomfortable, but it is a necessary process. If you want to have that child, you must endure. And the word endurance or patience is not part of our society anymore. This is a generation of instant coffee, instant message, instant preaching, instant praise, instant worship, Everything is instant, instant, instant. Even church is instant. They have to be able to predict the service time. They must predict the preaching and predict everything. Everything has to be calculated and they call it spirit of excellence instead of lack of endurance. We don't have time for God anymore. We time God. We time the Holy Ghost. And we tell God, we have come. This is the only day in the week that we have time to relax. So you have to perform, show up, give us the blessing on our terms. And God, you have to do it within the two hours. And after that, the show is over. God is not a showman. God doesn't perform. God instructs. And God commands. If you don't go through process, you can't maintain whatever you get. And if you can't maintain it, you didn't earn it. And if you did earn it, you can't maintain it. And what you did not earn is not yours. I have lost a lot of things in life. But the things I have are things I went through process to get. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. Hebrews 10 36. There is no shortcut in life. Those who go through shortcut cut their life short. Shortcuts will cut you short. Don't look for the easy way out. There's no easy way out. If a mother delivers today, and I've been to labor a few times. 
And as soon as the baby comes out of the mother's womb, the baby says, Mama, Mama, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> mama, Mama, can I have some fufu and a ben kwai? Mama, can I have some buru buru? Mama, Mama, I love you. Doctor, you did a good job. The doctor will collapse. Then the baby start walking and run to the security man with his gun and say, Mr. Security, I like your gun. The security will throw, he will leave his gun and take off. It's unusual for a baby to be born today and speak today and ask for a buruburu today. It can't happen. It's not possible. It can't happen. There's a process. Babies are not born today and talk today. Today there is a lot of spiritual babies that are prophesying and talking today and walking and running and people are not falling and collapsing. Life is a process. And if you don't go through process, you will come back again to start all over again. One of the reasons why the book of Nazar had to go to the bush for seven years to eat grass and become like the beast of the field was because he didn't learn the process. He didn't learn the lesson. So God said, you eh? you become big. You are king. You have all this wealth and everything. Go to the forest. Be like a beast. The day that you acknowledge that the heavens do rule in the affairs of men, your reasoning will come back to you and you come back to your palace as a king. Until then, you are reduced to the status of an animal because you didn't learn the lesson. There are a lot of people rising in this life without learning the lessons because they haven't been through process. And everything goes in today's society. People don't care how they make it. Just make it. Because our definition of success is different from God's definition of success. Just succeed. Lie to succeed. Kill to succeed. Scheme to succeed. Misrepresent to succeed. Destroy to succeed. Do anything to succeed. Don't worry about how you get there and how you get it. Just get it. And you become a star and people will celebrate you. It's a sick society and that's why we don't have longevity in anything because everybody does it without the rules. If you win a race and you violate the rules, you'll be disqualified even though you have won. You know something? I don't want to run this race and be disqualified at the end. Paul said the other day, he said, I have learned to bring my body under subjection lest I preach to others and be a castaway after I have preached to others. So what do I do? I bring my body under subjection because this body is rebellion and stubborn. If you don't discipline this body, it will mess you up. Because the body is already condemned. The body profited nothing, but the spirit gave it life. Lift up your hands and shout yes. yes. Hebrews 10, 36. For ye have need of patience. For you have need of patience. This word patience is not heard or preach about in the church anymore. We don't talk about patience. Everything is about faith. Power. Acceleration. Quick. Fast. Now. Nobody is talking about patience. But when a woman carries a seed without patience, without endurance, she can't deliver that baby. You can have a dream, you can have a vision, you can have a desire, a wish or a want, but if you don't subject that dream to patience, through process, that dream can die prematurely. And there are a lot of people dead, lying in the cemeteries of our cities and our nation 
They died before their time because they had dreams that drove them to die prematurely because they won't subject their dreams and their vision to process. The rules of engagement will expose you to battles you are not ready to fight. There are some dreams, there are some visions. If you have it and you don't exercise your spiritual muscles and develop the necessary capabilities or capacity or stamina to handle the dream, the exposure of those dreams can kill you. A lot of the rock music stars and a lot of the footballers and basketball foot stars, they end up broke. They end up broke. You know why? Because they make so much money. Somebody who have never saved a hundred thousand dollars before, through some gift, signs a deal of a hundred million dollars a year. He can't he can't maintain it. He buys a house of $20 million and invests $10 million in all the latest sports cars in his house. I had a friend, I won't mention his name, he passed. He had a garage with an air conditions and all his cars was in an air conditioned garage. He used to come and visit me in Ghana here with his private jet. A businessman, I led I led him to ministry. And whenever I went to stay in his house and I saw every best cars in the world, they were all in the garage with an air condition. It is sickness. Oxygen is not flowing into the brain. And the reason why sickness is because he didn't end it. But if you've been through process and you earn it through process, you develop compassion for society, you have love for country, love for people, love for the needy, and you help people. I was saying in the first service that if you look at this president, this present president, somebody who knew him very well was telling me they've been together for many years, and he was telling me, say, Papa. I have known this guy for over 50 years. And he said, the dream to be a president, he had it from the age of 12 years. He became president 72, no, 73 or four. Can you imagine the years he had to go through process? The number of years he failed and lost it and became reproach, disappointment, betrayer, and he kept on moving and kept on believing and kept on moving. Do you know how many people want to be president in this country? You see people, they haven't even been a boy's quarters before. They want to become president. They haven't employed two people or three people to pay salary. Done nothing with their lives. And they all have this dream. I'm not saying they can't be president. You have the potential to be president, but have you been processed? Because if you are not processed, you become a disappointment. You have the power, and when you have it, you won't know what to do with it. The reason why people come into wealth, and all they do is to buy brand new cars, I'm not saying there is anything wrong with cars. I like cars. I like cars myself. But with the kinds of responsibility I carry, the drug rehabs and the orphanage, girls on the street, and the things I'm doing, even though I admire and like cars, when I see what price of some of the cars I like can do, I don't want the car. Because you see, the car, if I can help some of these girls on the street and do some of the things I want to do, that will not give me personal pleasure, but if you put a smile on the face of somebody, that is a satisfaction 
Are you hearing me, somebody? Because whenever you can do something for somebody who can't do anything for you in return, that is where true satisfactions come from. But if you do things for people and they can do something to reward you, there's no satisfaction. I was telling them in the first service, if you help young lady, a young beautiful, you help her. And after you help her, she offers you her body or you demand and insist that she should sleep with you. There is no satisfaction in that. That is abuse of position, office, power or resources. A real man, a true man and a real man, is one that has cultivated and developed the capacity of working free from what you like and you admire. You look at, you look at her. She got everything you want. And you look at her and say, okay, baby, you got it. I feel you, but you in mine. Until, brother, until you develop that power in the choir where you can see all these beautiful chicks. You hear me? And you can feel them, but you are able to walk and say, girl, you may have everything I want, but you are in mine. Until that day, you don't have power. You lack power and you lack character. Ye have need of patience. Today there is no patience in our society. The youths of today, everybody is in haste. And people, people who are in haste to go somewhere, they die early. I've watched it for 40 years. So these days, I'm not impressed by people, whether you're a preacher, whether you're a man of God, a prophet, a politician, whether you are in corporate, I don't care who you are. If I see you dig, 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 grabbing, grabbing, that want to prove a point, I pity you, you won't last. And the reason why things happen to people, eh, and it keep happening, we don't learn from history. I am a student of history, so I fight my battles differently. I have learned to hold my peace and to let time fight the battles I can't fight today. Vindication is in the womb of time. There are some battles you will never win until you leave it to time. The future is for those who have learned to wait. And to endure. If you can't wait, if you can't endure, it's an indication that you won't last long. But you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. 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 It means that there is a possibility after doing the will of God for you to miss the promise. It means you can miss it. You can do the right thing. You can do the will of God and still miss it. If you don't follow the process. Now let me break it down because of time. We want to look at somebody like the first Adam. The first Adam was created and formed. But the first Adam was not born. And the first Adam did not go through process. And it's one of the reasons why he failed. If you don't go through process, you will not have value or respect for what you have. You don't know the value of a thing till it costs you something. And young ladies, young ladies, I know he's cute, smells good, knows the right thing to say and make you laugh. He makes you laugh. But 
put him through the process. Because marriage is not looks. Marriage is not beauty. Marriage is not charm. And marriage is not sex. And marriage is not chemistry. Marriage is responsibility. And marriage is purpose. The first time I married, I married at the age of 24. And if you ask me at that time, why did you marry? This was my response then. They say I should marry. Who said you should marry? If you marry because they said, your marriage has failed. You should be convinced. You should be convicted. You should have that assurance and knowing why you are marrying. If you marry for looks, when the looks changes, you are in trouble. Marriage is not for everybody. Did you hear what I said? Marriage is not for everybody. Marriage is not for boys. Marriage is for men. Marriage is not for girls. Marriage is for wives. Come with me to the book of Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee. First of all, I created you. You see, that is, that is the problem with a lot of us. We don't understand the difference between being created and being formed. And until you understand the difference between being created and being formed, you will miss it. He said, I created you and I formed you. Go ahead. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O he Israel. He that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, uh -huh. for I have redeemed he thee. He said, I've created you, I've formed you, I've redeemed you. And I've called thee by thy name. And you bear my name. That thou art mine. You are mine. When thou passest through the waters, he I said, will you be will with go you. through the waters. It's a process. Don't avoid it. Tell somebody, don't avoid the process. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Say, say, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Go through the process. So when a child is born at the age, when a child is in the womb of the mom pregnant, the mom is pregnant, and the, the mother delivers at the age of six or seven months, they call it premature. Premature, and I'll show you a scripture. There's a lot of premature millionaires, premature preachers, premature prophets, and premature political leaders and corporate leaders. Premature. You are a danger to yourself and to society if you are offered a position that you know that you haven't developed capacity for it and you accept it. You know Jesus, Jesus understood process. So before his time, they kept offering him all kinds of deals and giving him all kinds of exposure and he kept dodging them. And he kept saying, my time has not yet come. My time has not yet come. My time has not yet come. Why? He understood that if he went through process for 30 years, of his life, he will need only three years to fulfill his eternal mandate on earth. For 30 years, he went through process, and in three years, he finished his mission. It is the level of preparation and the process you undergo and you go through that means your placement and the outcome and the price of the product. Put your hands together. And give God praise, somebody. The shout of the king is in the house. Go ahead. When thou passest through the waters, the I will waters, be with thee. I'll be and with through you. the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Uh -huh. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You see, a lot of believers and Christians believe that because we are under grace. And not under the law. 
and we are living by faith and we can make faith confession means that you don't have to go through challenges you don't have to go through the process you can avoid process by faith confession a woman pregnant cannot avoid the process or override the process by grace or by faith it's a process you must go through it faith doesn't exempt you nor grace does not exempt you from the process the process is necessary it is necessary for where you are going and it is the kind of process you've been through that determines your placement and your longevity in life. Whether you can last or fade away has to do with the process you've been through. I have been through hell and high water. If I tell you my story, this is my story yeah. this is my song praising my Savior on the day long well the redeem you and he's your savior but the fact that you are a child of God don't mean you are exempted from problems and challenges did you hear me challenges are problem and problems is what reveals and shows the kind of material you are made of or the kind of product you are It's not how many years you've been in the Lord. But your maturity is determined and revealed by how you respond to challenges 
to crises, to problems, to temptations, to trials. When you are under fire, the way you respond to people and to God when you are under fire is what reveals your level of maturity. It's not how many tongues you speak or how much you can prophesy or how articulate you are. But it is the level of grace you demonstrate when you are under fire. Everybody can speak in tongues. Everybody can be nice when everything is all right. But show me, show me how nice you are when you're under fire. When everything is coming at you and you're under pressure and everything is being thrown at you and you are being misrepresented and scandalized and stigmatized and discredited. Show me. Show me your level of maturity when you are going through the waters and the rivers and the fire. Then I know how mature you are. Everybody can preach. Everybody can teach. Everybody can advise others. But advise yourself when you're under fire. When you're under fire, before you talk to me, talk to yourself. Show me how you behave when you're under fire. Then I'll know who you are. As for right now, we are all the same. But when you're under fire, then I'll get to know who you are. Messi me down, one boat on so. Metu me boo, Messi me, Namini. Jesus, oh, he knew me. Messi me down, Jesus must need go through Samaria. This is the Son of God. God made manifest in the flesh. God with hearts. Adonai Elohim. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Jarrah. God made manifest in the flesh. Must need go through Samaria. Why? He had to fulfill prophecy. And in order for him to fulfill prophecy, he had to go against all contradictions. If you want to walk with God, you must be willing to be misrepresented. Because if you want to be in the good books of people, you will not be a good disciple. For Jesus said the other day, Whoa! Woe is you. If all men speak well of you, you are not a good disciple. If you want to be in the good books of people, you can never be a good disciple. You must be willing to be misrepresented, to be scandalized, to be stigmatized. Until you are willing to lose something, you never gain anything in life. Until your hands are empty, you never get any new thing put in your hands. Until your cup is empty, it can never be full. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the testing of my soul. Bread of heaven, Fill my 
supernatural satisfaction is because we are not empty. We are too full of pride and arrogance and self. But if you can empty yourself and be void of arrogance and be void of pride and be void of self, then you are qualified to be filled because God don't fill em vessels that are full. He fills empty vessels. Come on, put your hands together, somebody. And give God praise and he may be seated. Jesus, though he was a son, had to go through Samaria to fulfill prophecy and to fulfill scripture. It does not matter what your prophecy is and what you are called to fulfill in life. If you don't go through process, you never fulfill. Jesus must need go through something. Samaria, a place of reproach and disgrace and proverb and a byword. A place of controversy and contradiction. You want to have a good name, you want everybody to love you, everybody to like you, you will never please God. You will never fulfill prophecy in life. You want to be the best and the good preacher in town and everybody like you, you never fulfill prophecy. I met somebody and he said, I've heard a lot of good things about you. I said, don't believe it and you don't know me. If all you've heard about me is good things, then you haven't heard anything about me. Then I, heard, I met somebody some time ago in La Côte d'Ivoire at the airport. He said, I've heard a lot of bad things about you. And I said, that is very good. But me too, eh? I've heard a lot of terrible, terrible things about you. As soon as I said I've heard some terrible things about him, his countenance changed. And I said, look at you. You were happy to tell me the terrible things you heard about me. When I brought up yours, your countenance have changed. Do you see how we can be critical of others, but we are never critical of ourselves? Hello? I have learned not to be loved by everybody. I don't want everybody to love me. And I'm not called to inspire and to reach everybody. There are people who will hear me, and those who hear me are those I'm called to. And those who don't hear me, they are not part of my sheepfold, and I'm not called to them. And they will hear others to whom they are called. And the process of life has taught me that. So I don't, I don't ever set myself up to be loved and to be accepted by everybody. If you love me, it is good. And if you don't love me, it is good. Period. Genesis 2. Genesis 2. And verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. You see, he didn't say create. He said form. Look at it. Look at something. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now go to Genesis chapter 1 and look at verse 27. So God created man in his own image. God did what? Created man in his own image. Uh -huh. In the image of God created he him. Uh -huh. Male and female created uh -huh. he there. Look at verse 28. And God blessed them and he said created unto them, them. He blessed them. And said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Uh -huh. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And uh -huh. have dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh -huh. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You see, so man was created. Man was blessed. 
man was empowered to fulfill the divine mandate or the dominion mandate. But go to Genesis chapter 2 and look at verse 5. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. You see, this, this is a contradiction for me. Because Genesis 1, 27 and 28, God created man in his own image, after his own likeness. Then he blessed him. Then he empowered him. Then he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue the earth, have dominion. And then chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible said, God withheld the rain because there was no man on earth to till the land, so he stopped the rain from coming. It's, it's a contradiction. So where was the man that was created and blessed and given dominion? Where was he? To till the land. Why did God hold back the rain? Where was the man that was created? Go to verse 7. Go to verse 7. And the Lord God two. formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh -huh. And man became a living soul. You see? So the man that was created was not formed. And that is the problem with all of us. We have dreams. We have visions. We have desires. And they exist in our wombs or our spiritual womb or call it spiritual incubators. We have created things in our subconscious mind and in our fourth dimension, in the mind of our creativity. We've created, we have great dreams and visions of life and what must it must become. But between creating and forming is a process. And if you try to avoid the process and think that your dreams your desires and your wish can just come to pass without going through process for those dreams to become a reality, you stand a chance of miscarrying. And there are great people in this life who miscarry. They have bought great dreams and visions and possibilities. And this is the reason. Because when it's created, they don't allow what is created to go through process to be formed. And in order for it to be formed, you need the breath of God. And God breathed who into that which was formed and it became a living soul. So the first Adam was a soul and not a spirit. The second Adam was a spirit and not a soul. This is the difference. The reason why the first Adam failed was because the first Adam was not born. The second Adam was born. The first Adam didn't go through process. The second Adam went through process. The first Adam, because he didn't go through process, he didn't know the value of the dominion mandate so he could easily lose it. He could lose it for love. For love. 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 You know what I'm saying? Love. Love. He lost it for love. But the second Adam won't lose it for love. Life is not about just love. It's about purpose. It's about mission. You are on a mission. You are here for a reason. You are in born by some kind of accident. You are not here because you want to be here. You are here because you've been summoned by destiny. You are here by divine providence to fulfill purpose. And you can't allow love, can't allow affection, can't allow self to take the place of the fulfillment of purpose. And Adam fell for love. And see that the dominion mandate. And man is still paying for it. Because he didn't go through process. He didn't know the value of it. He was a living soul. And not a living spirit. The second Adam was born. An angel appeared to a woman. 
who was a virgin by the name of Mary and said, Thou are favored, highly favored among women, for you've been chosen by eternity to carry in your womb the seed, the savior of the world that shall save his people from their sins. She said, how can these things be knowing that I know not a man? And the angel said, don't worry about that. Just obey, leave the, leave the outcome to God. And she carried in her womb, for nine months in her womb, even though she was carrying the son of God, the pregnancy went through nine months of process like every human being. Jesus' pregnancy was not six months or two months or three months or seven months. You see, you can in the name of miracle under any circumstances avoid process. God is not a magician. He's a miracle worker. And a miracle is something you work. The, the workings of miracle he said, the workings of miracle. So miracle is a process. Magic is automatic. Miracle is a process. God is not a magician. Let's stop making God a magician in the church. And realize that God is not a magician. He's a miracle worker. You can't come here and expect me to give you a bottle of anointing. And then you become a multi-millionaire tomorrow morning. That is magic. It's not a miracle. The Bible said, He that is faithful in little shall be faithful in much. So it's a process. You can't come from nothing, from nowhere, and overnight become a multi-millionaire. You haven't been through the process. And I can't lay hands on you and anoint you and make you a millionaire or make you a president by the laying off of my hands or a CEO. I can't make you pregnant by laying hands on you and pouring anointing oil over your head and you receive a seed and become pregnant by the Holy Ghost. It doesn't work that way. There is a process. I know a lot of people, they see me and they say, Papa, Papa, lay hands on me. Lay hands on me. I want some of your anointing. I want some of this thing. And I look at them. I look at them. And I ask them, can you handle? Can you handle the contradiction? and the sufferings, and the warfares, and the misrepresentations, and the battles that goes with this anointing. Can you handle it? If you can handle it, I will lay hands. But if you can't handle it, then run, brother, run. Run, run. Because not everybody can carry this anointing. This anointing comes with a lot of controversy. It comes with a lot of warfare. Not everybody can carry it. And I don't even expect my children to carry my mantle. God will have to determine who carries it because of the battle and the warfare, the warfare that goes with it. Put your hands together, somebody, and give God praise. That's why I send my son None of the preachers here are my own children by flesh. My own son by the flesh, he's at the youth church. I say, young man, I know you're doing your best. You feel like you got what daddy got. Go to the wilderness. Grow with the youth. Learn the lessons. So when you grow up, you will know what it takes to stand here. And I said, this, you don't just stand here. It's not just preaching and teaching. You need to go through the process. Gold is not gold until it goes through fire. So if you say you are gold, if you say you are gold, let me put you through the fire. And if you don't perish and you come out, then you are gold. But until you go through fire, you are not gold. 
If you are clapping, do it better. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8. Though he to... were a son, uh -huh. yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Though he was what? A son. A what? A son. So the fact that you are a son don't mean you won't go through anything. The fact that you are a child of God don't mean you don't suffer. There is a generation that doesn't believe in suffering. This generation, eh, we don't believe in anything. We just believe in good times. You know what I'm saying? Let's have a good time. Let's chill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 brother. Brother, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? You got it. Yeah, you got me? You got me? Yeah, you got me. Let's have a good time. Let's chill. Life is not about chilling. I'm not saying you shouldn't have fun. That's not what I'm saying. I, I try to have fun every now and then. I try to travel and go to places where nobody knows me and I, I put on a hat and I just, I just take it easy and put on my sunshade and, you know, nobody knows me and I just have it cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, brother. Hallelujah. So I'm not saying you shouldn't chill, but if all you know how to is chill, 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 chill. People who chill, 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 don't go anywhere. The people who control this world eh, are always tired. You saw Barack Obama by the time he left office? Gray. 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 Eh, gray. You saw President John Mahama? Uh -huh. came into office, young man by the time he was leaving gray you see this one even though wait and see the next four years the way, the way they are running his life you want to be president do you know what it means to be president you have no life of your own you sleep when you are told to sleep. They say, boss, it's time to go to bed. You sleep. Then when it's time, they wake you up. Boss, it's time to go. You have to meet this and meet this and meet this. Then they can't say, you have to drink coffee. Then you drink it. Then you say, lunch time, you have to eat some ampicia. So you eat it. And they say, next meeting. They run your life. You go places you are told to go. You don't go where you want to go. You are property and commodity of state. You are managed by people even who don't know their left from their right. They will tell you what to do. And you have to comply. You are Mr. President, but you are being controlled by people who are not president. <laughs> Me, a man bishop. I'm a bishop. They try to do that to me. These bishops here. They control my life. They control me. And sometimes I have to rebel. After seven, they say, oh, you have to see this person. You have to see this person. You have to see this person. And then they read my schedule to me. This is your schedule. Tomorrow you are meeting this. And I say, why am I meeting them? What is it about? You haven't briefed me. So, well, and, 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 and I see them. I say, no, this is not good. I didn't ask for this. I asked for promotion. <laughs> but I didn't ask for these kind of things. And these people control my life. And they tell me what to do. Then they'll tell me what time I should sleep. Then this thing on my hand here is pushing me. You need 10,000 steps. You have 3,000 more to go. Then they are telling me you have to drink water. Have you drank your water? You have to drink so much water. And I look at them and I said, this is bondage. But you know what, what they are doing? They are making me responsible. They are holding me accountable. And sometimes I want to rebel, but you can't rebel. 
Me, I can get away with some things. Sometimes I can rebel. I can say, cancel all the schedule. I'm not seeing anybody. And they say, you can't do that. And I say, I just did in the name of Jesus. The president can't do that. He can't do it. You want to be president? To tell you what time you should sleep and get up. Even when you are tired, you are there. I've dealt with a lot of presidents in Ghana and outside Ghana. It's very difficult. They are tired. And you are talking to them and they are tired. And they have to listen. I went to visit a president somewhere. And we were talking and the guy was sleeping. And the, and the chief was, that was punching, Mr. President. <laughs> listen. Nothing is easy in this life. Though he was a son, yet lengthy obedience by the, not by the few things, oh, by what? So how, how come you, because you're under grace and because you are living by faith, you think you, you shouldn't suffer anything. So any little suffering, hey, how am I? How am I? In the name of Jesus, Satan. Some of the things is not Satan. Some of the things is God Himself putting you through the fire. If you are clapping, clap. You know, I, I know, I know this kind of preaching is not what you want to hear. You know. I have a message that is still burning in my bones, but I'm trying to manage it very well, you know. It's a very powerful message. How desperate are you? I, I, I keep feeling it, you know. But I'm trying to get it in the right context because as much as it's Bible, it's a soulless message. It's soulless. It's soulless. And if you are not spiritually mature, when I preach it, you will misbehave. How desperate are you? If you are desperate, you will do what you have never done before to get what you've never had before. If you are desperate, you will change the rules. If you are desperate, you can go on a hunger strike. If you are desperate, you will stop eating that chocolate and vanilla ice cream and do whatever must be done and needs to be done. Are you desperate? I want to see how desperate you are. By the time I finish working it, some of you begin to misbehave. So let me stay here for some time. Oh, you are not clapping. You are not clapping. <laughs> now, now, let me break it down. Time, time, let me break it down. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Let me break down some few things, let you go. I'll continue on Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm going to look at it from a different perspective. I want to look at men who succeeded because they went through process and those who failed because they didn't go through process. Then we want to look at faith. What is faith? And the levels of faith. Faith is a foundation. And there are seven things you must add to your faith lest you become blind. You can have faith and be blind. And there are seven things we must add to our faith. And we're not talking about any of those seven things. All we talk about, faith. If you have faith, you can say to these mountains, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And if you doubt not in your heart and believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever. You say, have faith in God. And today, we even have people preaching, have faith in your faith and have faith in yourself. We are a sick generation. Yashua said, we backslide it. Have faith in your faith. I will show you the different kinds and types of faith. And faith is a process. From faith to faith is a process. Little faith, weak faith, Small faith, great faith, shipwrecked faith, no faith. There are levels of faith. I'll show you on Wednesday. But let me finish this. Hosea 7. Ephraim, mm -hmm. he has mixed himself among the people. He has what? 
mixed himself among the people. Among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Is a what? A cake not turned. Uh -huh. Strangers have devoured his strength. Strangers have devoured his strength. And he knoweth it not. He doesn't even know Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him. Uh -huh. Yet he knoweth not. He has come of age, matured, but he's acting like a kid, a child, and a baby. He's not ten. He's not well done. You can't eat him. It's a cake and a bread that is not well baked or cooked. That is premature exposure. That is avoiding process. That is going ahead of time. That is wanting to become something before you have developed capacity for it. There are young people today, they want to drive Rolls Royce. Do you know the amount of money it takes to fill the tank of a Rolls Royce? Do you know what it takes to service a Rolls Royce? So having a Rolls Royce is not by faith and it's not by desire or a wish. It's by process. Our people in this church with Rolls Royce and I'm happy for them because they've been on the road, some of them 30 something years. And he's driving a Rolls because he can afford it. He can maintain it. And they are doing other, other things for society and for their country. So if he's driving a Rolls Royce, he's, he, he deserves it. He deserves it. He's in it. He's in it. But if you came on the scene today, you haven't done anything. And you are driving a Rolls Royce for driving a Rolls Royce. You haven't been through process, you haven't earned it, you can't maintain it. So it's not enough to desire things. You can't go around by faith desiring people's wives and people's husbands. You can't go around by faith claiming people's wives and people's husbands. Somebody say process. Now, let me, let me break some things down and let you go. The difference between David and King Saul is this. David, at the age of 17, was anointed with the oil of recognition. You see, you have to be careful about recognition and appointment. You can be recognized and yet not appointed. And that is the problem with us. As soon as we get a little recognition and a little exposure, we develop this mentality of, I have arrived. Inche. Meduru. Who told you? David was anointed to be king at the age of 17. And it took him. He was anointed to be king, 17, before his brethren. Then when he was 25 years, he was anointed king over Judah. Then when he was 30 years, he was anointed king over all of Israel. 17 years, first anointing. 25 years, second anointing. 30 years, third anointing. We, from 17 to 30, he escaped 24 assassination attempts by King Saul. He was living in caves, anointed, king over Israel, but living in caves. Anointed to be king, can't pay bills. Anointed to be wealthy, to be rich, have a great dream and vision, but can't rent a house, living in the backside of the desert and the jungles running for your life yet anointed to be king anointed to be somebody and the oil of somebody is on your life and yet nothing and nobody because you have to go through process Solomon Solomon became king 
over Israel without process at the age of 20 years. That was one of the problems of Solomon. He became king at the age of 20. And because he hadn't been through process and didn't fight for it and didn't earn it and it was handed over to him by father and by daddy, he didn't know the value of it. So he allowed love, love, love for strange women to override his obedience and made his wisdom foolish. No process. King Saul missed it. No process. Became a king overnight and missed it. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, missed it because he didn't go through process. It was just handed over to him. Today, may God help us all, including myself as fathers. We are we are building the future for our children, but we haven't prepared them for the future. 